Welcome to the St. Michael Easter podcast series. My name is Mary Lessman, and I will be leading our meditation today. Our theme this Easter is community, rediscovering one another. After being physically separated for more than a year, we look forward to the opportunity to reconnect and become even more the kind of community that God intends. May the power of the resurrection strengthen us on this journey. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 17 to 24. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then turning to the disciples, Jesus said to them privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Here ends the reading. Today's gospel passage is the conclusion to the story Luke started yesterday on Jesus' sending of the seventy. When we hear today's passage, our attention might go immediately to those things beyond our normal experience, the casting out of demons, the vision of Satan falling from heaven like lightning. Or we might be struck by Jesus' promise that the disciples will be able to tread on snakes and scorpions. Or maybe we sit up and take notice when Jesus speaks of names written in the book of heaven. But when I hear this story, the whole story, not just today's conclusion, two things stand out. First, the disciples go out in teams. And second, they are instructed to take nothing with them and must rely entirely upon the hospitality and generosity of others. The team part is consistent with other parts of the biblical witness. Earlier, Jesus sends out the 12, and they have a successful mission. Now he sends the 70, who likewise return in joy with stories to tell. After his resurrection, Jesus will give the great commission that all of us who are his followers would go before him and spread the good news to the ends of the earth. We see the beginning of this lived out in Acts, Luke's sequel. Jesus knows that plenty of folks will resist the gospel message, whether from fear or disbelief or self-interest. In his commissioning of the 70, Jesus says he is sending them out like lambs amidst the wolves, so he clearly expects this mission to be challenging. And so Jesus sends them out in pairs. When one falters, the other can help. When one is lost, the other can seek the way. When one is discouraged, the other can hold the faith for both of them for a while. And when the good news is received, they can celebrate together. That's what the community of believers does. We hold on to each other, console each other, encourage and embolden each other, and even at times believe for each other. This discipleship thing can be hard, but it's always easier with a companion. We are stronger when we stay together. We can forget this, that working with one another in community is not just preferred, but essential. Too often we view our faith and spirituality as private and independent. We live in a world that tells us it's up to us as individuals that life is a zero-sum game and there's not enough for everyone, that we need to look out for ourselves and our loved ones first. Jesus reminds us that we find success only with and for each other. 
something just as true today as it was in his time. He also insists that the 70 take nothing with them. Nothing. This means they must rely on the generosity of others for everything. The questions arise immediately. What about my comfort? What about my compatibility with my host and or my ministry partner? Most of us would struggle with this lack of control and inability to make our own choices. We would feel unprepared, perhaps unsafe, and definitely vulnerable. And that might be Jesus' point. We are vulnerable. We forget this, too. We go to great lengths to create or perpetuate illusions of control, independence, invulnerability. But it only takes an illness, a loss, a disappointment, or death to painfully remind us just how incredibly vulnerable we are. We must do this work together, and we must rely on one another, even to a level of uncomfortable dependence. This is what the mission of the 70 teaches us. But the greatest lesson might be this, that in the end, regardless of the context of our ministry, regardless of whether the good news is received or not, regardless of whether we are treated with hospitality, we have everything we need. We have the promise of Jesus to go with us, to do great things through us, and to bring us home again. As it turns out, all we need is the name of Jesus and each other. Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.